little while since I've done a video so let's just uh, take a look at my Gen 7 Pro and see where we're at today. We have taken off the roof rack just to help reduce some of the, the center of gravity issues of that extra weight being up there. We still have that on my daughter's Gen 7. I've removed my front bumper. It lets me kind of get a little bit more clearance going up uh, slopes, rocks, limbs, whatever. I feel like that front bumper just catches so much stuff. Eventually I plan to make me a bumper. Haven't gotten there yet. Um, I am running Proline Hyrax 1.9 tires. Uh, I do think that they have helped a lot. I did notice, and some people have said this even with the stock tires, that uh, the bead lock, the inner rim sits up a little too much. These things were grabbing so much better than my original tires that I had to shave my bead lock down a little bit so that they uh, did not slip off the wheel. Uh, did have that problem a couple of times and thought I had probably ruined my tires a couple of times. Probably going to eventually do that on this one. It is It slips out a little bit, but not nearly as bad as these Hyrax did. Uh, just working down a little checklist of things to that I've done to the truck recently. Um, high steer kit works really well. Uh, if anything, it works too well. I have had to dial back the, the dual rate on the remote so that it does not rub the springs every time I go to turn. Uh, it, it does improve the steering a lot. Uh, so I've got the, the, the links on the, the high steer knuckles, uh, I, they were out of, uh, the, the Gen 7 C hubs. So I have E10 hubs on there. They seem to work fine. Uh, I did have to kind of spread the hubs open just a little bit. It, it was rubbing the CVD there just a hair. Uh, my daughter's Gen 7. I am running all Gen 7 hardware here and have not had any rubbing issue. Uh, like I said, there's, it just seems to rub right in between the, the C-Hub arms there on my with the E10 hubs. Other people are saying they're running them no problems. So it may just be the ones I've gotten and that's that's fair. Uh, I know there's differences between every batch of anything that's made, so I'm not saying everybody will have that problem, but I did. I do run a metal horn on my servo on my Gen 7. Uh, let's see, so got that. Uh, I do run the uh, Rock Slide RS10 springs. I feel like I, I probably gained just a hair over an inch in flex. The shocks fully compress. I, I like it so much better than the stocks. Still running stocks over here. My daughter hasn't noticed a whole lot of uh, problems out of that. Uh, I run my shocks on both trucks on the lowest mounting hole on the frame. Mine, I had to move them all in one because I have managed uh, one screw just kept coming out and has stripped the uh, the hole there. So I uh, did have to do that on mine, but I still run them just straight up and down on, on my daughter's Gen 7. Uh, again, she's not having any problems out of it, Just and I, I wasn't either. I just needed, I needed to have that screw go into a hole that wasn't uh, stripped out there. So, uh, let's see, I do want to note that uh, I did go with a, an aftermarket, these uh, curved links just kind of make that thing not sit real well on here. I do have a, a 19 turn instead of a 17 turn stock motor, it's a 550. Uh, I do run a smaller, I'm going to say this backwards, uh, spur gear. I can never remember if it's pinion and spur or pinion and spur, but the smaller gear, I do have uh, less teeth on it, so it's got a little bit more torque, plus the, the lower turn motor's got a little bit more torque. Still getting quite a bit of wheel spin out of it, so I'm, I'm, I can usually 
will spin my way out of most things. Um, I did trim my front rod links down about a millimeter on each end, so an overall two millimeter shorter, which seems to have lined up this wheel a little bit better in the, the fender there. Uh, and the biggest thing that I have just done is I managed to snap a drive shaft the other day. So I have gone with some MIP drive shafts. Uh, they're CVD, so no more binding. It's not as sloppy as the, the stock drive shaft was. I'm very happy with the way they feel so far. I haven't actually gotten to take it out and drive it. But those are, uh, let's see if we can get this on the camera here. Those are MIP's uh, number 11116. They're for axial wraiths. Uh, Amazon has them for closer to about $55. So don't I wouldn't pay that sticker price if you can't get around it. Um, <clears throat> both of my trucks I do run uh, 2S lipos. Uh, really like the Gen's Ace 5,000 milliamps. I can get at least two hours, sometimes three. Uh, my daughter seems to get a little bit more runtime out of hers. I think she's a little easier on the throttle than I am. So, so I, I think she's gotten close to four hours out of out of uh, a battery on her truck. Um, those are some of the big things I've done. If I missed anything that you saw that looked a little different, feel free to message me. Uh, I'll, I usually try to reply back pretty quick on uh, any comments that are put on the videos. And as you, like you said, you, you can see here with the, the springs, I meant to show that in the, the frame here. So the left one is stock springs. And right about there, it, it's starting to want to come off the ground. And I've got quite a bit more height on the uh, Rockslide RS10 springs. Uh, just seems to perform a lot better. Looking forward to uh, getting the portal axles. I have signed up for those. Would love to get those in hand. Hopefully, it'll be closer to the 60 day instead of the 90 days like they've posted. But we'll see. Uh, last I heard they still had some spots open. If you're looking at getting a Gen 7 and want more ground clearance, they're coming out with portal axles. So they say it's going to gain 20 millimeters, which on last time I checked online, that's about three quarters of an inch that it will move your pumpkin, your, your differential up and get almost three quarters of an inch of clearance front and rear. So like I said, uh, the sign up right now is $70 for front and rear axle kits. You do have to assemble them. You do have to provide your own grease. Uh, they will eventually be uh, available at a higher price. I think they're going to be pre-assembled and they'll be available to anyone. But like I said, they'll be a higher price. So if you're, if you're thinking about it and you want more ground clearance to go, uh, I, I would suggest looking into it. They are pre-release versions, so maybe it might be worth spending a little bit more and getting the ones that come out with in a few months. But uh, I, I thought for the 70 bucks it was worth a shot, so I'm going to do that. And like I said, uh, slowly just upgrading some parts. And I know a lot of people say, why not just start out with a, a, a better, more expensive truck? But most people I hear end up replacing the drive shafts, replacing steering components and things like that. And if you're going to do that, why not start with a cheaper base? <coughs> and that's, uh, this is what I could afford at the time. So, like I said, liking the Gen, Gen 7.